Yeah. Are you going to wait or? Uh, well, we're going to have to kind of start, right? So at least we, you'll make note when Kelly gets there, right? Because uh -huh. he didn't say he's going to be virtual or anything. But okay. He said he. Oh, okay. Get the login. On my way. Almost there. Hi. I guess that's closer than Seattle. So once he gets in, we'll make a note that he's here. Um, Tom didn't have any changes in Genesis. We've been there. Uh, any particular department issue presentations? I have none. Mm -hmm. I even here, right? <laughs> so yeah, so we're going down to the folks that are here from Sunday at all with this interlocal agreement. Yes, sir. I will go ahead and lead that lead that discussion. I, I will mention that uh, Mike Dollum, outgoing public works director, and Michael Cosa, incoming public works director, decided to join us this evening. So we thank you for that. Uh, so yes, uh, this uh, conversation is going to center around a uh, proposed uh, a new proposed 2023 wastewater treatment facility interlocal agreement, placing the 2012 agreement. But that's Kelly right there. Yeah. A pause for a dramatic pause to see it. If that's him coming in. Feels like Charlie. No. Yeah, maybe it wasn't. So is oh. it the existing agreement then? No, no, that's him. It is him. Okay, perfect. I see him. Yeah. Oh, right. Cookies, oh, oh, here's a trick. Anybody like magic? Hey. <laughs> there he is. Hi, Kelly. Hey, guys. We were we were pausing for dramatic effect. Perfect time as usual. Nice. Hey. Hey. So it says five. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know, we have a couple of summer folks here. Huh? With the wastewater treatment ah, plant and outgoing public great. works directors, Mike so Allen and Michael Cosa. So they're intimately involved in some of the operations, of course. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we'll kick back off with, we had just gotten started. We hadn't even gotten into, into really the meat of anything yet. Um, but the uh, interlocal agreement that you have in front of you this evening, of course, is our proposed agreement that we've been working on together now for probably, oh, I don't know, three or four months. Um, the driving force behind the need for this new agreement is as we reach the point where the uh, uh, EPA through the Clean Water Act, which they delegated the responsibility for down to the states, has delegated authority to the city of Sumner to initiate a pretreatment program. The 2012 agreement uh, stated in it that at such time that that occurs, I believe it references putting together an addendum. We chose to use this opportunity to create an entirely new interlocal agreement because the 2012 agreement, the 2012 agreement uh, contains a lot of legacy language from a uh, previous expansion project that was no longer necessary. Uh, and we just wanted to use this opportunity to not only clean that language out of there, but also include the pretreatment program, uh, provide some language that uh, restructures and clarifies how billing and payment is made for the services provided. Uh, we added a definition section so that everybody was able to see exactly what, what is meant when we say certain things in the agreement. Um, and we also uh, added some additional language around the joint advisory committee and changed the membership there to include additional council members uh, and created the technical working group, which is uh, a technical group at the staff level uh, that will meet to discuss issues of uh, the plant. So um, that is the very, very short high level version. I thought what I would do uh, this evening is quickly run through those high points. I realize that you probably haven't had a lot of time yet to take a look at this in, in depth, um, but our schedule moving forward is that uh, it's coming to CDC this evening. It'll also be a workshop here in just a little bit. And then uh, pending any questions, feedback, concerns that the council may have, we have a little bit of time to work with Sumner on addressing those or coming up with uh, responses. Uh, and then it will, will be returning to council workshop on December 5th uh, for another look. Our hope is, is that at that point, it will be ready to then move uh, 
with the council's approval or the, uh, or the council's authorization for the mayor to sign on December 12th. Uh, so that is our schedule moving forward. We, we're trying to shoot for the end of the year uh, so that we can start off the new year with a new agreement. So with that, um, what I'd like to do is just kind of dive right into it. I'm not going to go word for word through here at so this time. The existing agreement that we have, right? Yep. Um, it's kind of cause that expired. Is that what? Kind of so there are elements of it that are expired. The pilot fee that was in that okay. agreement has expired. That expired in December of 2022. Um, and then, of course, there's the language about the pretreatment program and the need to update the ILA at that time. <clears throat> So taking a look at the new agreement, this is what I'm going to be working off of. Obviously, I just point you to the definition section up front. It does have uh, some very critical definitions in there, such as who the control authority is, uh, uh, who the
Okay. All right. Nope. Okay. Uh, the next section uh, that I wanted to jump to to highlight was section four. I don't know if there's any questions on the term of agreements in section three, uh, but basically it's stating that with the expiration of pilot fee at the end of 2022, uh, this uh, agreement, we're agreeing that this is retroly, retroactively affects back to January 3rd. Um, as far as any costs go, that doesn't impact anything. It's just the term of the agreement that comes up at what we're considering the termination date of the pilot fee at the end of December 2020. So that's why we're saying we're not paying for something between this is an important right. okay. The administration section in section four, this is specifically where we, we highlight a couple things I wanted to make sure you are aware of. This is providing some clarity regarding the Joint Advisory Committee and its role um, and what it's responsible for. Uh, so, this, this is the Joint, the Joint Advisory Committee is the, the committee that would include three council members. So, uh, yeah, I had a question about this. What's the proportion of from the to Bond Lake and the tour and the... Just as from uh, capacity? Yeah, it's, yeah capacity. Uh, it's 54% to uh, 46%. Is that the ish, yeah, what's the ish part? That is that is the actual ownership of the capacity. That is those are firm numbers of the current capacity of the plant, which is six point one and certain like you know BOD as opposed to whatever total suspended solids capacity, right? So the way the way those costs are calculated for this is that VOD, TSS, yeah. and the actual flow volume all make up a third of what we consider total capacity. So they're all they're all weighted by a third. So when we talk about capacity ownership, specifically in this agreement, it's talking about it, uh, in terms of million gallons a day of treatment capacity. City of Bonnie Lake, because of the amount that we've invested previously in upgrade upgrade costs to the uh, to the plant, we own uh, I believe it's of the 6.1 MGD that the plant is totally capable of. It's 3.3. MGD of that capacity is owned by the city of Bonnie Lake. The Sumner Den has 2.8 MGD. What's uh, the actual flow rate? Uh, it, actually, I couldn't tell you what it is right now, but it is below those amounts. We're not maxing out capacity in the plant yet. Yeah. I guess the, yeah. what's the proportion of the flow rate? Currently, like yeah. day day to day usage. Yeah. I don't have that for you right now, but I could get that for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I would it's, like that. it's between 56 and 58 percent. Is that what Bonnie we're seeing Lake? right now? Uh, well, the wise, you're just dividing what's going through the plant that way. Yeah, that so uh, you know on a monthly basis, you know that's typically it's uh, between fifty six to fifty eight percent of the wastewater that can. Well, that's why you know the capacity working of the plant because some is like whatever it is, it's BOD or whatever it is is a lot higher than all. Of it. Yeah, I think as opposed to TSS is probably kind of the same between the sites. I would have to go back to okay. I don't have those on the top of it. So, so it doesn't, you know, not a lot. Yeah, it's not water. There's three components to it. So if we're higher, then we can. So the BOD that we pay we can a higher yeah. share of. But you have a certain capacity, or I don't know if we're getting ground milk, you know, hey, because even if we have, you know, 10 million gallons a day, can't, you know, do that because. BOD from one plus the other is higher than what the plant can process you know, before you get to that ten million. Yeah. Right. So that those figures. How do you guys like work with that kind of stuff? Yeah, typically for capacity wise. Our numbers are not really close to those capacity the flows that we're getting. So it hasn't really been an issue. Uh -huh. uh, it might be someday as more development comes online. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's uh, really once you reach the figures, the discussion about uh, further expansion and improvements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're not close to that right now. We're, I think, are projected out for 10 years. That's kind of the so. DOE thing. Is that it is. Yes. Yeah. They require facility planning effort mm -hmm. once you hit 85% mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. any of those uh, constituents. Yeah. We're looking mid 2030s, I think, before Thanks any of the growth. Planning so oh, yeah. trigger that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, discussion. like you said, this is probably the most important agreement that we're going to deal with. In the 
That's a good one. Thank you. Uh, still in the administration section, it also does go on to define that uh, a change from the previous agreement that the Joint Advisory Committee will meet quarterly. And this also coincides to our billing structure that's been set up for this agreement. So the Joint Advisory Committee will have an opportunity to meet and discuss the current bill that is being issued at the UB. Um, so those will operate concurrently now. Uh, under the terms of the old agreement, we're billed monthly, and the Jack was meeting once a year. Uh, moving on, the other item I wanted to point out is the technical working group, which will be composed of four appointed staff members from each city. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be to discuss some of the more down, down in the weeds technical stuff that we're encountering on a day to day basis. Uh, will also be the place where uh, expenses that are exceeding $100,000 would be discussed initially. Those would uh, at some point then be revisited by the JAC. So, we you know, so one of the crux of the major issues, of course, is how this all works out with either the Jack is or not, that's just blocked. But the technical working group, you know, if Sumner wants to do whatever, and Bonnie Lake is like, eh, eh, you know, that million dollar investment, we're not interested in it. Um, how does that work out? So it is in section where we we did it uh, un, under unbudgeted major operating expenses, which is in 6D under the cost, the cost sharing section. Mm -hmm. We do talk about um, if Sumner is aware of any unbudgeted major operating expenses or an unbudgeted increase in a planned capital improvement, they're required to give us at least 30 days notice. Uh, but then we're any non-emergency unbudgeted project costs that exceed 100000 will be brought to the next Jack meeting for review and recommendation. Um, so there's not anything that actually occurs without first getting that over that dollar threshold that yeah. occurs without first being heard by a Jack. But, you know, you know, you know me, right? You can see where I'm going, right? You know, someone's like, hey, I want to spend a million dollars on this new dryer. And Bonnie likes, like, meh, it's unnecessary, not interested. You know, you can buy this one for $500,000. That's the crux of the issue, right? Sumner's like, um, unless there's something here, Sumner's like, that's very nice. We're buying a million dollars and you're paying half. Right? Well, that's always a problem here when expenses coming through those. We discussed in council numerous times about the expenses they brought forward that they really need to spend that kind of money, but you don't have any control over what Sumner has decided they need to spend for it. Well, I would, I would disagree with that because Sumner's always done a really good job of keeping our engineering staff informed. Right. And when they're making the decision to buy a million dollar sure. dryer, mm -hmm. they're making that decision because we walk through that decision making process with them and believe alongside them that that's the best it's alternative. Yeah. yeah, so it isn't happening that they're springing a million dollar purchase on us just to continue to use that number. And we're opposed to it and think they can do cheaper. We've worked alongside their sure, engineering yeah. consultants and yeah. believe they've chosen the right thing. You know, I've gone to one of those meetings in 12 years I've been here. I think it's too bad. I know Dan's been to all of these stuff. Too bad more of the council members can't see what's going on. They'll answer a lot of questions. I've heard them all talk about why are we staying in this? And they said, well, it's coming from Sumner. Well, they don't haven't heard the inside discussion about it. Whether you can allow other I mean, one council person or more to attend those meetings on the main one three, I think it'd be beneficial in the future, especially if our new new council people come online and say what's happening. Because if you're not involved with your discussion, you also you tell me you want to spend this much money on why? You don't understand why, and that's we're kind of and he's trying to fill in the gap for what the questions are, and that's a problem I've had in the past. You know? So I think that was one of our objectives with this agreement mm -hmm. was because we heard that disconnect mm -hmm. and we wanted to, we didn't like it, you know, yeah. we're, we try to be very transparent and we're trying to make good decisions, but if the uh, council or staff or anybody doesn't feel like they're getting the ability to talk with us, that's our job. Yeah. We want to talk about, we can talk all day about the things we like to talk about. That's what I love. About uh, being in here, oh, yeah. we, we get we get a little more technical yeah, exactly, than yeah. maybe people want every once in a while. <laughs> but um, you know, I think I think for example, the dryer, we really tried to have a, a good staff working level oh, yeah. uh, discussion, and I feel like uh, this enhances the ability for council to feel that they are able to to be part of the process. The principle, right? But you know, in the end. 
it, it's kind of you know we have to answer to our vote players essentially in this. You know, you guys provide excellent service. You guys have been doing that saying job, and it's like, you know, Chef, you know, it's very good. So, you know, I treat the sewer utility as much as that or utility. Just like mm -hmm. I would not have a discussion with PSC about where they put plumbers or why they need to transform it. Mm -hmm. You know, because I as a council member can't understand all the technical details of why they need to upgrade a transform or a substation or something like mm -hmm. that, right? But I know what your service costs me mm -hmm. and I'm gonna pay for that as a service. Like having me at the table and like talking to me is like, oh yeah, part of that decision? No, I'm not part of that decision. Because I'd have a vote in that decision if I was part of that. But it, it, it's a hard relationship between the services you guys provide and what it costs the city of Monterey. Mm -hmm. you know, Our channel there's, is there's no. There's no reason for you not to like purchase like high end stuff because yep. somebody else is paying for more than half of it. True, but we also are um, our city too. <laughs> and we're, well, yeah, and that's fine. So yeah. I'm 100% with yeah. you, right? So then we're going to put in this agreement that the rates for sewer for Bonnie Lake and Sumner are to be the same. And they so are. the cost for treatment is the same. No, no, no. Rate to the customer. So there's two parts to the right. right. You're going to have to have a component for trying. I don't, yeah. I, I, our rates are significantly different than yours. There's two parts to the rates. It's there's, political. There's treatment and there's also collections. Yeah. yeah, right. So Sumner and Bonnie Lake pay the same amount, a half percent per gallon for treatment. Well, yeah. And then uh, we pay uh, 0.6 cents for our collections. Yeah. You pay. 0.9, almost one one penny for your collections. You have a lot bigger collections. You got pump stations, so that's the difference between our business. We have a lot of pump stations too. We have 14. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we have about double what they have. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're also a minus. Why is a pancake? Right. We've been down to summer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there's, you know, even our pump stations. All they have to do is get in there and leave, so that it can get going. We got a couple. Of yeah. 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 And so a lot of it, you know. Arc, but arc, so that's really hard when we're trying to answer to our customers because our sewer yeah. rates, and I don't know if it changes, it looks totally different on paper. But if our customer looks at a sewer rate, some there isn't, it looks like a sewer rate. They're, they look wildly different. Mm -hmm. Last time I looked at them, you know, this yep. why is a citizen of Bonnie Lake that elected me, right? It's the right. political part of it. Mm -hmm. They're saying, why is our sewer rate so much than the sewer person? You know? And it's this big dance between, okay, well, da, 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 da. we're both in the same plant. We're both doing the same thing. We're both providing the same service. But how it gets to the plant is vastly different. Well, a little bit. A little bit. It's vastly different, and it's much larger up here. It, I mean, it is. So, okay, it's larger, then it's good. It should be right. It should be less. I don't know about that, right? I, I, I mean, I <laughs> can see where you're going, but... Thing, but I, I don't know that I completely agree with it. I, I can't wrap my head around how we would entertain the idea of charging customers in both cities the same amount when we have vastly different Yeah, and I don't know what lot does and stuff like that, you know. Probably isn't lot almost a separate organization. Well, yeah, lot, well yeah, it's, lots owned. Of, yeah. it's owned by Lacey, Olympia, Thurston County, and Tumwater. They own it at joint. Yeah. And the whole, I think is their whole collection system all part of that? Mm -hmm. It is. See, yeah. we, that's not the relationship. You just want to buy a right collection now. system? Yeah, kind of want to <laughs> we, we can do like Pierce County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $10 million, you can have it. We'll sign up for it tomorrow. Does that sound good? $10 million? Is that right? I think so. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. So, um, <laughs> I can try and put that in the agreement. I don't know. <laughs> um, That's what it said. Yeah. I, no, I appreciate it. Oh, $10 million. Collection system? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? There you go. Um, That's like two or three pump stations. <laughs> any additional conversation on any of those points? Not yet. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving forward, uh, just uh, what we were discussing earlier as far as ownership capacity, uh, that's addressed in Section 5. You can see the table that's inserted in there. Uh, and of course, it does break down flow, BOD, and TSS. Mm -hmm. So those are the capacities of each of those that we own. Current flows into the plant are 
below those levels. And so that would be the table on, I don't know what it is in the packet, but it's page six and seven. Yeah, I guess I was just surprised that those percentages weren't, there wasn't a little more room between them. I, I would have anticipated 40 to 60, right? yeah. based on just, you know, a naive, a, you know, just like you said, we have a huge collection system. We have a lot. I, to, to speak to that a little bit, I think, uh, I don't know when it was completed, but some facility planning was done for potential future expansion should Bonnie Lake require additional capacity, up to, I think, like uh, six and a half MGD. Um, uh, so the overall treatment capacity of the plant would rise to over nine MGD. Um, so there may be a point in time where the percentage would be split more heavily towards Bonnie Lake. But at this time, based on the size of the plant and current capacity ownership, that's how it breaks down. So what happens when we add a thousand new tons? Yeah, I, that, so that's that's the thing that we have to be on our toes about because we do have one area left to to remain that could bring that many customers to the table. This is the plateau four sixty five area. It, it will absolutely, it probably more than a thousand mm -hmm. customers. Upwards of. I mean, that's 478 acres of undeveloped property out there. Um, and so at that point, when we know that that's going to be more real, when that's going to be coming, we're going to have to undergo facility planning effort to uh, figure out how we're going to do that. Fortunately, uh, or unfortunately, depending on it, uh, the developer is going to have to come, come to the table on, on that and assist with with those costs. That's probably an alternate route too, by the way. You can't use the same funnel with the pipeline. You know, it's not going to get on the pipeline now. Mm -hmm. What about behind Safeway? What's that? Um, the route? You can't get that. No, kind of what about there. the development behind Safeway? Oh, that that's little like, one? That's a, at this time, yeah. at this time, that uh, is not anticipated to that's send us over or pass you. So that's, that's at least 600. 672 units, correct. Okay. But uh, in the in the projections that we've done so far, that does not apply as far as current. Do we know what how close that brings us to the capacity? Um, I'd have to look. I don't have that number with me. You so want to know something it's more concerned about our infrastructure domains going mm -hmm. back forth and yeah. the size for that and the line for the engine line or whatever. Right. So Dan brings up a good point. The, the the one of the big concerns has always been the fact that we only have one sewer main that goes between them. And there has been some initial conceptual work done on what another route down to the treatment plant. And and there could be a day when we reach that point where we have that. Um, we're not there yet. Um, but we do have a route identified. Um, and we at least about 10 years ago, I think the cost was somewhere around 50. Um, but again, those are all very loose numbers based on a very loose. You know, with that one route, we ever have a really strong earthquake up here we yeah. cause upon those lines. Please go more time. I know, I know. Engineering <laughs> 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 mind. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> right here, and then after that, <laughs> outside of city limits. Did our part. Just use 410. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, actually, the mom someplace. Yeah, that's always a problem, a concern. Anything that happened that shift the ground or well, we had give more. Well, we well, had, yeah, had with the camp going down there and going on. Right. So, uh, just to keep things moving, it's under Section 5 uh, and it's D, uh, Part D of Section 5 that is one of the big drivers for this new. Uh, it's under the heading of non-domestic wastewater. Um, and the pretreatment program is a program that exists to uh, help identify and then uh, head off any issues that we would have with non-domestic water. So this would be anything that's com that's not coming from a residential. So these would be your wastewater flows from anything from restaurants to manufacturing facilities, warehouses, whatever it may be. And uh, I believe, I don't recall when it was, but Sumner has actually been up here and gave a talk, a presentation mm -hmm. yeah, previous, previously on that program. This basically is the, the meat behind that program. Um, in addition to some uh, ordinance uh, 
excuse me, code revisions that will be moving forward at a separate date. Um, these are what define what that program will be. And so in here, uh, there's language that talks about how the Bonnie Lake is on board with the program. It talks about who's going to do what. Uh, basically, the program will be administered by the city of Sumner um, with uh, the city of Bonnie Lake providing uh, cooperation and some support. Uh, you can see in 2B uh, in that same section, uh, that there's discussion about what uh, Bonnie Lake is agreeing to it to be part of this. Um, and then at the very bottom, there's some, uh, again, some uh, highlighting that doesn't really mean a, a whole lot other than uh, I believe that was one item I wanted to come back to that we hadn't had a chance to, to talk uh, mm -hmm. fully about yet at the staff level, uh, which is regarding uh, our contribution monetarily to the program. Right now, what is proposed is that it would be based on the percent of non-domestic users in Bonnie Lake versus the total number of non-domestic users uh, between. So again, just coming up with a percentage share and then charging the program costs that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So how how, much, how many business? I mean, we have a lot of yeah. existing businesses. Right? This is okay. saying. This is non-domestic users before they hook up. So are they all, all the existing ones probably in? No, they would be subject to a free treatment. So we have to educate them. Uh, so, so I don't have the number of businesses right now in front of me. I just made a note to bring yeah, that. Well, we've been it's, it's we've been gathering what that number is, and last what we heard was about 150 in Bonnie Lake. In Bonnie Lake, and I think uh, that's a, <clears throat> was about a 30. Percent amount, somewhere around 30 to 35 percent of total, but we haven't completed the full survey yet to understand okay. if there is other properties that weren't listed that are doing, you know, doing business and, and contributing in non domestic ways. Okay. Does that include like hot dogs? I learned my lesson that time, right? No, it doesn't include that. Yeah. So this is actually the, okay, it's cool. great, it's good. I agree, I mean, we're talking about actually forcing businesses to put in other treatments and stuff like that possibly. Possibly. Yeah, you know, like a dentist office, the treatment, something like that, because in the end it costs everybody a whole bunch of money if it gets down to you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cost, what were you talking about the cost? Because were we less? Talking about like identifying the user or whatever it is in a dentist office. So then your sewer charge is going to be more than the dentist office thing. You're not going to spread this. Across. So right now, this cost would be just spread across all all sewer so, customers. So okay, but why would I spread these types of costs across a domestic user, right? Um, and actually, let me go back. Let me think about this a little bit more. We're basing the total cost on number of non-domestic users. Yeah. Um, I think the commercial people. So it's how, yeah. how are you paying for your pre-treatment program? There's a couple ways. How do you get to it? There's a we're we're not doing it yet. <laughs> yeah, this is still getting into place in time as well. This is new for us. Yeah. But our we we have there are some expected permit application fees for those uh, mm -hmm. like different users that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so you need to set up a, there's a permit process to to, to do this, these discharges. So there'll be mm -hmm. some defraying there. There is, we do, we expect that our, we will be charging, uh, it will be, it will be, uh, you know, the rate payers will cover part of it as well. Um, but that it's, yeah. it's a choice you get to make. Uh, what do you mean by rate payer? So our, so our, our domestic, the domestic city of Sumner folks. I heard you. Yeah. yeah. But it's, so the other, the other thing moment? too is when, uh, Dennis office comes in. Sure. They pay. Uh, uh, then we have a, a schedule of SDCs that they yeah. pay system yeah. development yeah. charges. Yeah. So they're, you know, four or five times a single yeah. family. Sure. Yeah. And then that goes on to their monthly bill. Yeah. So the, the industrial users are paying more yeah. Yeah. Um, than the single yeah. family because yes. they're paying multiple yeah. equivalent service units. But it shouldn't be added on a single family. Oh, yeah. oh, I mean, I mean, so you guys were kind of thinking of closing the charges process? 
in, in, non, uh, in domestic user. You're going to bill a domestic user. It's like the cost of, you know, uh, the pre treatment program, this type of thing is really, you know, I think we were talking 500,000 a year or something like that. Yeah. And then a lot of that will come out of the industrial uh, yeah. base, basically. And I was thinking if it is, say, say that costs 500,000 for, you know, non domestic, you know, they already have a different rate. I would think you would just put it into that rate code. So, so it's a, it'll be a choice thing, though. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Also, so you yeah. got to recommend to yeah. Right. You can council will decide. Uh, we, you know, I think we will recommend that because it is, you know, state and federal requirements that we do yeah. this, that yeah. it, it's a burden that everybody carries. Well, to some extent. Well, so, right. I'm not understanding. I'm just asking why. Sure. Why would you want to do that, I guess? Because the domestic user isn't, you know, that isn't the, the mm -hmm. parent doing it. You know, the only reason if the no non domestic users need a lot of but the, the industry the industrial area is already paying they're paying more so well, they should they should so, pay for whatever they use right they yeah pay for use or are you trying to i, I guess yeah, that's the political thing right it becomes how do we pay for the program and sure. it's a decision point for, for i didn't know if it was like normal for you know the sewer operators to Try to bury those charges into the residential. I think it's it's not something like that. Yeah. I don't know if other jurisdictions yeah. break it out separately, but it's totally possible to do that. We'd have to put a surcharge on all the industry, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's in right. order to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's, so, that's a policy. So one of the things we were just discussing discussing right here as you all were having that conversation is that currently our sewer code mandates that commercial non-residential customers. Have should pay one single family sewer availability charge for installed water meters. So we could create a class of rates specifically for commercial that would then take into that into account and handle the payment that, rate that, that way. So that is an option. It's not something that we currently have to require. Think about. But in yeah. this in this agreement, is it written in such a way that prevents us from doing that? No. Don't want to, you know in the agreement that we. Have. Like all of our customers for this. Yeah. No, so it's a problem. And the other part of that program will be reviewing, especially the new right. industry that comes in. Sure. And there'll probably be, and we haven't set this all up yet, mm -hmm. uh, extra review charge. Yeah. So that and if you remember, that'll help pay for the program. If you remember, Council Member um, Swatman, the Council passed a pre treatment ordinance a yeah. few months ago. Yeah. Um, that there's a fee component with that, um, and then once we in council, both councils approve the agreement. Once we know what this cost is, we can certainly yeah. revisit rates with council, and we could, you know, revisit thirteen twelve sure. um, and add a add yeah. an additional cost for non domestic. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Tom doesn't have to remember me. He's, he's out. I'll be out of it. No, I don't know you remember that maybe go raise sewer rates yeah, in the future. Uh, uh, no, we're not domestic users. You have to make a choice whether to go yourself or everyone because there's increased cost. Can I just increase the SDCs? No, that's a one time thing. Mm -hmm. You could, but I'm going. Yeah. 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 This is not well, a program. Can't we just charge a, on a right for the SDCs just to get this program <laughs> done? Sounds yeah. like it's good luck. Yeah, like a new business. <laughs> yeah. What was the last new business SDC in Valle? Uh, probably the stupid lemon pea thing. I don't know how they make a business thing. So, uh, can we is this going to change behavior by our non by our oh, yeah. the pre treatment program? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the hope. You're like yeah. on their door saying, Hey, Mr. Office, well, I got what, what behavior is it going to change? Illicit discharges, uh, dumping yeah. things into the sewer system that they yeah. shouldn't be. A lot of this is stemming from, well, some of this is stemming from requirements that are coming down the road for nutrient. Uh, specifically, nitrogen is a big one. And nitrogen comes in a lot of different forms. But the problem here is that this stuff is getting discharged to treatment plants. It upsets the biology of the treatment plant, but then it also makes its way out to the sound where you've got problems with disappearing oxygen. And you're you're impacting fish species and so on. So there's there's a real effort underway. So far, there's a general permit that uh, it applies to. I think it's 58 different plants that discharge directly in the town. Those same requirements we see 
coming towards plants that don't have a direct. So the treatment pre-treatment program is one way to head some of that stuff off before it makes its way to the tree. So more to come. It's not the sole reason, but that is this is one of the contributors. So I guess I still don't understand. Are they gonna buy a piece of equipment? Are they gonna good. are they, they gonna require to they might be required to are they gonna throw it in the trash? I, I couldn't specifically answer that right now because I don't know what the problem Different what the problem is to anticipate. I don't face it. But we could certainly, you know, at some point come back with a, another discussion on pre treatment and dive down into some of that. Because every you know, every business has a different thing they're trying to right. figure out. No, right. And yeah. different discharge. Dentist office is pretty specific with the mercury. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that's one of them. What's going to happen to East Town? Too. Nitrogen, mercury. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but maybe not so much. Let's see. I can't remember theory. I figured maybe I can. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that is one component of, of a larger issue. Right? You know, pre-treatment is, is another way to help control what goes to the plant. Um, just moving on. Uh, section E under the under five is is just reiterating and expanding upon. The infiltration and inflow section that was in the previous agreement. This is just stating both cities' commitment to making sure that our collection systems are tight. We're not taking in uh, either through cracks in pipes or through uh, manhole covers or what have you, storm water or any other types of or sources of of, uh, of fluids that would be contributing to the volume flow down to the treatment plant for uh, treatment. So this kind of these are points of the section, I guess, right? Um, just that. Uh, that we're going to continue to work on them. Uh, other than that, I, I think that uh, uh, you know because it, uh, infiltration inflows can be such a contrib contributing factor in what you're paying for the plant. Sure, we want to minimize that, so well, we're both well, stating we're on board. Well, Maybe the opposite, depending. Depending. How you do your math. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Moving along, Dan. <laughs> um, the uh, next couple sections, uh, responsible sewer service area. The, this is uh, very similar to what was in uh, the previous agreement, except it's it's updated uh, that um, uh, with a couple of other bits of information. I don't know that we had. I didn't get these maps from you before, Sorry. so I'll have Probably those tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it would be reiterating what we have for sewer sewer service yeah, in our general sewer, sewer plan. Sewer I don't know if I'm reading that one right or something like that. What is that, Dan? Well, was, whether there was a, an issue with something, however the wordage is in there, about um, us saying, oh, hey, we found this new technology. We don't need summer anymore. Thank you very much. We're out. Yeah. So that, this particular one is highlighted because the city attorney and I need to discuss that further. We see that as being a pretty critical piece to not have in there. We believe we should have the freedom to make adjustments as needed in the future. Uh, I have talked preliminarily with with Sumner about that, and it's something we'll be revisiting. Because we always need to advise them and keep them apprised of you know things that could be coming up. Because you know we could have technology, whatever you know that comes about or capacity that we have access to mm -hmm. all of a sudden, like and, 465 and, or who knows what. And just to be clear, are you talking about this section right yeah, here? Yeah, or if, if there's yeah, a, that's so. what it is, right? Yeah. 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 The, it kind of sounded like to me it was written in a way of, hey, you can't leave us unless we let you leave us. And it's like, hey, this is a no fault divorce, we're out. <laughs> I'm not Catholic, so I'm good. So, <laughs> so more, more discussion to follow on that. Um, cost sharing, section six. Uh, this was a big one. It, it uh, really added a lot of transparency and formalized uh, how we will get budget information from Sumner so that we can budget appropriately. Uh, it uh, proposes the quarterly building, billing, excuse me, instead of the monthly billing as we have been doing. Uh, with the idea, as you can see there, the further explanations can be discussed at quarterly jack meetings as of the bills that we're seeing. Uh, it also then uh, clearly specifies for each of the different types of expenditures we could anticipate seeing, how those are paid for. So you can see joint facility operations and maintenance and how that charge is calculated. Uh, how we derive uh, what the expenses are for major operating expenses, then capital improvements and compliance improvements as well. Um, 
And then as I referenced earlier in section D, uh, there is the paragraph that talks about unbudgeted major operating units. I realize there's a lot to mm -hmm. take in there. But, mm -hmm. uh, That's all good. Yeah, I don't know what the difference is or how it worked out because from our perspective, whether when we're doing, again, as a service provider, right, you know, we pay them according to the percentage kind of thing, and, and then they decide that they need to, you know, hire another whatever or whatever. And, and then we automatically have to pay that percentage of the thing, you know, and that gets back to that. We kind of disagree with that type of thing, but, you know. Okay. Well, would we, I guess, consider changing the composition of the jack to be a three line away from two? Yeah, it's, it's not a voting thing, though. There's not a vote there. They tell us what they're going to do. And we yeah, that's what I got from the technical. Technical. Their plan. We have capacity. Can we make it a voting thing? We can do anything with a new We wanted to, but some that agrees to it. Yeah, I, I, would, <laughs> I, I would just, I would, I would like to go on the record, though, to say that up till now, our conversations have not been like that. We have sat down and had very clear discussions about what the needs are oh, yeah, and provide right. definitive buy-in or have pushed back on some. So it's not so much that Sumner just tells us and then they do what they do regardless of how we feel. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that that's really well, we, appropriate. But we don't work in their plan. We don't know their operation. Uh, you know, we don't know. We know. That's correct. I mean, certainly yeah. we're not treatment plan operators. None of our here. employees work in their plan. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of a hands off kind of a thing. And that's what seven years pass. How we know that's being used in the plan? You know, they, they're getting new there for new people and stuff. Is that really yeah, those are good going there or we're going to use this elsewhere in the city too? Mm -hmm. We have nothing on our end overseas what they're doing. I'm not, I don't distrust what they're doing, but just, you know, this is out of our hands and that's what they're taking care of. You know, I'm comfortable with that, but still be nice to have some type of understanding of yourself. So what would you be looking for then? Yeah, no, that's a trick, right? That's a trick. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. 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 And yeah. the easy way for you to complain from this is not being down there. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I don't and ask, ask that forward. question to, to yeah. you know, that's but I mean, seriously, if, if there is something, I just, I don't have a good idea for how we would maybe make that difference because I, I do, in the conversations that I have with uh, Sumner, uh, on mm -hmm. sometimes daily basis, mm -hmm. um, I have confidence that how they're saying they're using things and what they're preparing is being used for what they say it is. So yeah. the only other thing I would think is in the future maybe if we had if we had an employee that worked down there with them in their facility. I don't know if I would think at all. But the only way I would be more comfortable with what's being done mm -hmm. if someone working hand in hand one person with them there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and maybe there is room for that in the future. Um, you know, it, it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's a lot of future, amazing, so I don't know, you know, whatever. It's That's not currently different. part of this agreement. There you go. So, how's that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know because so, but yeah, that's a good question. There isn't anything from staff level kind of thing that you're looking at. Hey, we really need to be doing this because obviously this is probably what you propose for the staff level is kind of what the scenario. Yeah. Um, the rest of the agreement, um, so we go into termination and, and a lot of the stuff that, to be perfectly frank with you, I turned to Jennifer and had her provide a review on. Um, and uh, certainly we can discuss anything yeah, that you have questions about here. Yeah, is there and stuff like that? Because I've seen some note about 2073 or something like that. Or something. Yeah, I think we had, in section three. That it's uh, the agreement shall continue until terminated by both parties, consistent with section seven. So, um, and then section seven. Okay, first is section two. Um, so it's a 17 now. Um, permanent is it's basically continued terminated and terminated. They can, it can be terminated by mutual agreement. Um, in the event it ceases to be utilized as a historic treatment facility. Yeah. Um, it would be surplus. So it's uh, that's the we don't want them to, to kick yeah, us out of the renewal. The county, if they decided that they need more capacity, we're making agreement. 
kind of getting left with that. Yeah. Yeah. So it just is a perpetual agreement unless we agree to terminate it. Yeah, but so I don't know if that's a great strategy, right? Because frankly, from either side, you'd want to have a mandatory like ability right. to review it at some point. I don't know exactly what the time period is. So, because if you discover later on that there's something going on that's just not working very well, like 10 years down the road or yeah. five, whatever it is, be time like, hey, you know, we have a, an opener or whatever they call it, but you know, that you have the amendment or otherwise, you go, why, you know, if the agreement H9. is closed and, and they're happy with it, why would they ever agree to it? Like, and, hey, Dan, just mm -hmm. really quick, I uh, just uh, yeah. Mike was pointing it out to me. Number five under <laughs> under five D one or excuse me two. You know, at page nine, uh, <laughs> you'll see a paragraph uh, called periodic review, and it does say in there the party shall review and revise this agreement to ensure compliance with Federal Clean Water Act and Federal Clean Water Act regulations. The pollution issued there under as necessary, but at least once every five years. Um, I don't know if, I mean, this does reference pretreatment. It's in the pretreatment yeah. section. I don't know if maybe expanding the scope of this or pulling it out. I mean, yeah, we could certainly um, put a uh, term in the agreement. We could say, however, the agreement will be revisited in accordance, you know, at least every five years in accordance with section. Um, 5 D I, I think that's what it was. Oh, I mean, if that would clarify things. Okay. There's one thing floating around somewhere, I can't find it right now about insurance requirements or whatever. And I don't know. Oh, it's in the back. It's in the back. Yeah. Unclear to me why we need insurance in the first place. And then there's kind of a sticking point the way I was reading it. It was required as just to have a particular insurance provider or something like that. It says uh, the agreement or Washington City's insurance authority. No, it's like, mm, yeah, no. Uh, okay. um, we're going to, if we're required to have insurance, I don't understand why we're required to have. You'd think it would define what type of in, and the level of insurance that we're required to have. Because, again, we don't have any operators or anything down there. I don't know why we have to have insurance, but I'm definitely going to have to. I be opposing a particular insurance provider. So we so. could, we both have WCIA right now, sure, which is why we have it. But yeah. as, assuming seven over three, we could also say or equivalent coverage. Sure. Yeah. For that, I mean that. But why? Do, and then why do we have to have insurance? Because huh. it's good. <laughs> so, wait a minute, it's a plant that I don't own that I'm insuring against what? Well, so you're saying, what is, oh, uh, let's that, just, uh, I can wait this 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 Right, well, we have to do backup, but also if one of our users, for example, puts Dumps, uh, nuclear toxic waste chemicals down, down the plant. Down and it screws up the whole plant, then right. someone's going to sue us. It's good that we don't have to say oh, Wait a minute. Now, somebody did that. So we're not going to go sue Costco because they did that and recover those costs? We needed that? City of Denver? Well, there is a... Um, I don't know. I don't even know why I'd be interested to see what, you know, that quote-unquote insurance looks like that we're supposedly carrying for that. It sounds like it's more of a... Yeah, we're... Well, we have, there's a mutual indemnification. Is section 9, page 35 of the packet, um, where they indemnify us for their their actions and we indemnify them for ours. So if our actions cause a problem, we want to have that insurance. Of course, Bonnie does never does anything wrong. Oh, maybe that's the wrong number. <laughs> but if there's something like some right like so, someone flushes something that messes up the system. We would go soon. And it is actually tracked upon the, you know, you could probably get yeah. the testing. They can, usually yeah. generally, if they're doing yeah. that kind so. of testing at that point. It, no, it's, it's usually not just, Jim, it's usually more like Jim Bond or <laughs> somebody <laughs> who decided to dump, yeah, you know, dump a bunch of radioactive oil. waste or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it would be, but it, it could, mm -hmm. you know, that's, That's what insurance is for, for the unknown. Yeah, definitely. And it definitely, and it seems like it's possible. 
seems like cities tend to get sued more than Jim Bob. Well, there is Jim. Or if they yeah. do, it's Jim Bob and the city of Bonnie Lake and the city of Sumner. Right. So it's a good thing to have insurance for yeah. these sorts of situations. And especially since there's a job. Exactly. Well, we'll just have to make sure to you know, not have those particular names mm -hmm. of those providers. Hey, well, and we could say or or yeah. That's really fun. I suppose so. Right, but they have to agree to want to have an agreement. Really? <laughs> Very good. So thank that's you. It, huh? Yeah, that, that's, that's it. it. Yeah, and I get to do it all over again. I know. That's gonna be awesome. Um I I and please I, I know we've got a holiday in here, but if you have any questions, please yeah. feel to reach feel free to reach out. Um it's just all, I mean, it's a partnership between cities. It's also, you know, a partnership right. here at right. yeah. internally as well. So, yeah. so we have to have, by the way. Missing subsection. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry.